Good afternoon. I'm Mary Hagedorn from the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. And today I'd like to tell you about a new conservation program called the Coral Biobank Alliance. Our goal is to save coral diversity. We are a collaborative global network of coral biobanks, nursery practitioners, and coral experts preserving all species of coral for ecosystems and restoration and research. I don't have to tell many people here about the importance of biodiversity, but let me review it. It's an essential solution for climate change. Biodiverse ecosystems recover better from natural disasters and they allow for the formation and maintenance of complex ecosystems. The goal of our alliance are three. The goals include securing the biodiversity and genetic diversity of all species of coral by 2026 standardizing co collection, storage, and data management practices across our organizations, and training professionals and building capacity in reef systems around the world. Our founding partners include the Smithsonian Institution and Taronga Conservation Society Australia, Great Barrier Reef Legacy, World Coral Conservatory, NOAA, AZA Coral Safe, which include AZA Florida Reef Track Rescue Project and the Mo Moat Marine Laboratories International Gene Bank. We are located um, across the globe. And if you look at the blue dots on the map, we go everywhere from the Pacific with the Smithsonian to Australia uh, with Great Barrier, Re Great Barrier Reef Legacy and Taronga. Our areas of conservation interest are also global from the Pacific to the Caribbean, Red Sea, Indonesia, and the Great Barrier Reef. We work by having core functions and node functions. The core functions include database management, uh, physical vouchers and genetic vouchers that will be contributed to museums, genomic data analysis, outreach, convening, and long-term storage, which includes both cryopreservation and aquaculture. Our node functions include regional engagement, securing permits, collections of the coral, coral husbandry, training, capacity building, and research. We've collected some corals to date. We have about 156 species, um, which are collected by, have been collected by Moat Marine Laboratory International Coral Gene Bank, Association of Zoos and Aquariums, Florida Coral Reef Rescue Project, uh, Coral Reef, the Coral, the Great Barrier Reef Legacy and the Smithsonian Taronga Partnership. So total, we have about 4,300 uh, individual corals, as I said, encompassing about 156 species. Our five-year timeline to save corals um, starts out modestly and it builds, builds over time, but we hope over five years, we'll get to about a thousand species, understanding that many species of corals are not yet are not yet identified and some are hybridizing. We also want to include many individuals within each species and that will be de determined over time. Our achievements to date have been creating the global partnership of the Coral Biobank Alliance. We've had monthly meetings during the pandemic virtually. A letter of agreement is now being finalized and, signing, and signed. We have standard methods and protocols amongst all our members and are refining those. And we've collected about 156 species to date. We are working on cryopreservation of coral fragments to enhance this process. However, the problems facing coral restoration are many. It's not just the, 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 the maintenance of the genetic and biodiversity of corals. There are other aspects we need to consider such as public, public perceptions, management de decisions and global and local threats, which all impact how readily we can use our corals to restore corals, to restore coral reefs. However, we consider this a marathon and not a sprint. And all of our Coral Biobank Alliance members have agreed to a 50 plus year engagement. We are starting out with colony collection on reef where we GPS locate and mark, um, the, and mark the, the, the corals inside to imaging, and then these colonies are shipped to land-based nurseries where uh, they are placed in aquaculture and are tagged with an RFID chip. And um, as they grow, this new growth can be shared with other organizations. 
There are also small pieces are, will be cryobanked and will allow for the maintenance of genetic and biodiversity from the time of collection. Additionally, we will identify colony pieces by in-depth genetic testing and museum voucher samples. Now, once these have started growing, as, they, as I said, they can be shared. Uh, we've mostly collected clones from the reef, but we can diversify those clones by placing them into ex situ reproduction. This will allow for selective breeding for increased heat tolerance in coral and increased genetic diversity. And then these, these more diverse, uh, uh, perhaps more heat tolerant corals can be placed back out on the reef by traditional owners and management, which will help le lead to increased genetic diversity and biodiversity. Our priority next steps include um, building out our core functions and, and fundraising for them, collecting, studying, and securing coral species facing immediate threats, building and expanding coral um, database for tracking coral, enhancing cutting edge science for coral fragments, and setting up uh, geographic node operations of, of additional partners. Thank you for your time. And thank you. I'd like to thank our funder, the Ziegers Family Foundation.